Hello Hornets, uh, welcome back. Uh, it's been a while since I've done my last video, but I hope to continue and finish up with the course. So today what we're going to be looking at is the fundamental theorem of calculus. Basically, we don't want to use those summation formulas as long as we can avoid them. And they don't always work for everything. So instead, we're going to find, have to find an easier way. Now, we're going to start off with the basic uh, information that we had before, that we have a number line, that we have two values, A and B. Uh, there's a function, F, that is differentiable and therefore continuous over that interval. And we're going to want to make sure that as we do this, we keep in mind that there are certain formulas and ideas that are still allowed. For example, we have, if the function f of x is differentiable and continuous, then there is a value c sub i somewhere on that interval a to b where the antiderivative anti creates a slope that is a good approximation. Now, the smaller the value or that distance, delta x, and if you recall delta x, is that difference between delta x sub i and delta x sub i minus 1. Excuse me. So we have these basic facts that we're going to have to use. Now, for convenience, we're going to talk about a as x sub 0 and b as x sub n, which means that the value that precedes b has to be x sub n minus 1, and the value that follows x sub 0 or a is x sub 1. And if that's the case, then we can now make a very clear generalization. And that is that x sub 0 is less than x sub 1, is less than x sub 2, and so on, all the way until we get to x sub i, my, uh, comma, x sub i minus 1, and then continue all the way to the end where we have our x sub n minus 2, x sub n minus 1, and x sub n. Now, we can all agree that that's our number one. And what we want to do is we want to make sure that we show that the antiderivative f of b subtracting the antiderivative f of a is going to equal that integration. So we're going to have to be very clever as we do this. And what we're going to do is we're going to take the end f of x sub n and we're going to subtract f of x sub n minus 1. And what we're creating is a telescoping series. Again, this is called a telescoping series. And it's a very special series because if you look at it carefully, what we're doing is we're canceling out all of the middle values. And we're going to continue this all the way to the very end. Go f of x sub 2, f of x sub 1, f of x sub 1, f of x sub 0. Now, notice these two are opposites. Well, the next two would be opposites as well. Just like these are opposites and these two are opposites. It leaves us with our f of x sub n, which we said was b, and f of x sub 0, which we said was a. So if you look at this carefully, we now have f of b minus f of a is equal to the summation. So let's write that down. f of b minus f of a is equal to the summation as i goes from 1 to n, and we now have this 
f of x sub i minus f of x sub i minus 1 using our generic middle term. Well, look how close we are. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to multiply by x i minus x sub i minus 1 over itself. You notice all I did was multiply by 1, but this now gives me a summation of f of x sub i minus f of x sub i minus 1 over x sub i minus x sub i minus 1 times x sub i minus x sub i minus 1. And you'll notice this was our f of c sub i by the mean value theorem. This is what we defined as our delta x. And if I want this to be infinitely small, it only makes sense to use our norm. Notice what we have. This is the integration from a to b of that derivative, the f of x, the x, our differential. And we've now set it equal to the antiderivative, working with the two endpoints. That is the fundamental theorem of calculus. I hope this has helped you all. I hope that uh, this made sense. Please uh, feel free to read play it if you have any questions. Thank you very much. Be well, take care, and remember, be nice to each other. It is easy to be.